Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode about a recent road trip that I went on from California to Montana with some friends. And you might be thinking, wow, that's impressive. Jason has friends? Yep, and I don't even have to pay him anymore. Well, it's party time in the USA. Just kidding, things are pretty bad here. Long story short, we've all had plans this year that were either put on hold or straight up canceled. That much is at least true for me and all my colleagues. So one day, a group of us just decided to say F it and hit the open road to Montana with a few shit stops in between. On this road trip, I went with my brother Matt and his roommates Tim and Brendan. For the road trip, Tim and Brendan would be on their scooters while Matt and I would be in his lifted Ford F-150. I brought along the godly Mamiya 7, but I also had some new gear this time around. Namely, just a Polaroid SX70 and a Nikon R10, which is an 8mm camera. I was very fortunate to find a listing of this camera from a seller that said the camera came from a good, loving, and nurturing home, and had stayed in the family since its purchase in 1993. I've never shot 8mm before, and I started thinking that that fake 8mm film gate overlay that everyone uses looks kind of dumb. So I just decided to do it for real, which is 10 times cooler, but 100 times less cost effective. That and the Nikon R10 kind of looks like a submachine gun, so I was excited to see what kind of trouble that gets me into. I shot all my Super 8 footage on Kodak Vision 250D, which is a daylight balanced motion picture film, and I had it scanned in glorious 4K. Anyway, it was time for me to go, so I told my son slash meatball gobbler, Baxter, that he's the man of the house now. We left Los Angeles and headed east towards Nevada, just as California was beginning its annual ritual of burning to the ground. While Tim and Brennan rode their Vespas through 113 degree heat in the Mojave Desert, Matt and I cruised along in his Prius with the air conditioning on medium instead of high. So. I'm not sure who had it harder. Our first stop would be Mesquite, Nevada, which is just like Disneyland, if Disneyland sucked and wasn't fun. Anyway, let's get to the meat of the video. What film did I bring? When it came time to choose my weapons, I knew what it had to be. 10 rolls of Portra 400, five rolls of HP5, and the cherry on top, six rolls of Ektachrome. And then the huge donkey shit on top of the entire analog Sunday was a roll of Ektar 100. Fortunately, I was able to delay the inevitable because I only shot about half the film that I brought. The Ektar lives another day. Ektachrome has been growing on me a lot lately. I shot some images earlier this year with Ektachrome and I really enjoyed how painterly they looked. What once was foe is now friend and it's time for me to stop hating it because it's different and I'm afraid of change. But anyway, for my first roll, I shot some Portra 400. There's one shot of the hotel that I took twice at different times of the day, and I'm not sure which one I like more. The next day it was time for us to head to Utah and trade the Nevada heat for bears. On the way I picked up some haunted ghost pepper chips, and when we got to camp I told the homies they were nacho cheese Doritos. It's the kind of spicy Doritos though. Oh no. Yeah, you win, Jason. <laughs> we got incredibly lucky and managed to snag one of the last first come, first serve campsites at Fish Lake National Forest. Inside the tent, there's my pillow for tonight. The site was at over 9,000 feet in elevation and was somewhat waterfront real estate and even came with the unsettling feeling of being watched. Regardless, it soon became happy hour because when you bring your own beer and whiskey camping, happy hour never ends. I 
further down to the lake and yeah, okay. I noticed it too. I seem to like shooting my 8mm footage like it was an episode of The Office. I like this shot a lot because of its simplicity and pastel colors, but damn, I wish I could have placed the stop sign a little bit better between the gap and the trees. The constant threat of altitude sickness, my looming hangover, and a bear attack akin to that scene from The Revenant kept me awake pretty much all night, so I decided might as well get up and shoot the sunrise. I loaded up some ectochrome and hoped for the best. Just as I finished off the roll, the perfect shot came along in the form of a small boat perfectly framed between two trees, but I didn't have any more film with me, so there was nothing I could do. A true film photography horror story. So why did I bring the Mamiya 7? To be perfectly honest with you, it wasn't so much about the photos as it was I wanted to flex on everyone. While the price on that camera is ass awful, the Mamiya 7 for sure is the best camera that I've ever used. I brought it because it's lightweight, shoots 120, and the 80mm lens on it is sharper than any murder weapon. Anyway, after singeing off my arm hair in an explosive bacon grease fire, we hopped in the Prius and ventured forth to Salt Lake City to check it out, and ultimately put their weird alcohol loss to the test. In the saltiest lake city in the world, we met up with Brendan's brother and headed to the park for some R&R. Later that day, I snapped this, and it's one of my favorites of all time. Which is funny to me, because I don't think I even thought twice about it when I shot it.
The next day, we straight up hauled ass to Yellowstone National Park, oftentimes going over 120 kilometers per hour. I really dig this photo. I think it harkens back to the idea of framing your subjects in your shots. In this case, the waterfall is framed by the trees and I believe I shot it at F22 to maximize the range of focus. Sometime later, Brennan and Tim arrived on their scooters and we set up camp near the campsite's complimentary sacrificial circle. Guess we're gonna be neighbors again, pal. You've been in my neighbor my whole life. As Brendan left to go do Brendan stuff, I snapped this photo. Looking back at it, at first I kind of wished I sped up the shutter speed a little bit and got less motion blur on him. But now I think it's kind of cool and shows motion in the shot. The latitude on Portra is unbeatable. Back at the camp, a lady approached us and offered us her food because she had extra and was leaving the next day, which would be another stroke of luck that would kind of turn into a trend with this trip. At dinner, I got to have my first taste of a hot sauce that was harnessed straight from the bottom of hell. The sauce was called Ass Blaster, and boy did it live up to its name. I woke up at 3 a.m. to an uneasy feeling, scared and sweating in my tent. So I got up quickly and, you know what? Why am I telling you this story? Just use your imagination. How'd you sleep? Eventually, much to my own relief, we left everybody's favorite apocalyptic super volcano and headed north, but not before stopping at some hot springs. As we schmobbed through Idaho and Montana in a Prius with California plates, we definitely started getting some looks. Eventually we arrived in a really kitschy but really cool hotel in Missoula and we got an awesome room featuring a beautiful portrait of an elk's ass. I really liked the aesthetic of the hotel so I snapped a few frames and one of them turned out to be one of my favorites. Granted, it's just a 7-up machine, and I think we can all agree Mountain Dew is better, but the shot itself is pretty moody. We 
Here's a cool comparison of the same gas station shot moments apart on Ektachrome and Portra 400. I think I dig the Portra more. Ektachrome sometimes kind of leans into this purple slash blue look a bit much. In this case, Portra's warmth works well in my opinion. The following day, it was time for us to reach our final destination. Not like the movie, just where we'd be posted up for a few days. Again, somehow we got incredibly lucky with this campsite. Not only did we show up last minute to a reservation only campsite, but we got one of the best sites in the entire campground because it was next to a river with a view that would make even the toughest moose in Montana shit itself. Because the campsite was one of the most beautiful that I've ever been to, I had to shoot away. Ectochrome seemed like it was the best choice for the setting as it delivers on those blue, green, and purple tones that Montana displays. Why is your phone all f***ing cracked? This is one of my favorite photos from the trip. The lighting is very beautiful and the single lone tent makes the whole scene feel pretty isolated. The f is a huckleberry. At this point, I hopped on the back of Brennan's hog and we tore up some pavement. On the ride, I was so excited about the footage I was capturing that Brendan kept complaining about something jabbing his lower back, but he just assumed it was my camera. Back at camp, the huckleberries finally hit my bloodstream and I huckle smashed our axe. Damn, Jason. So yoked. As I came down from the peak of the huckleberry high, I started trembling and felt cold. Let that be a lesson to everyone out there thinking of trying drugs. It's never worth it. That's like this natural curve, do you see that? Oh, it's yeah, like man. Born that to thing skip. Is ready to skip. Born to skip. This is an interesting photo. It wasn't foggy when I took it, but it kind of looks like it. It got kind of swampy in my tent during the morning rain and anything that was glass in there kind of fogged up. It was only after I took the photo that I realized that I had a free heavy diffusion filter. Why was it so steamy in my tent, you may wonder. That's for me to know and for you to never find out. It was time for me and my merry gang of respectable individuals to head into Glacier National Park, and it did not disappoint. We headed across the park to a waterfall hike, and I had loaded up some Portra 400 in my Mamiya 7.
I shot two versions of this, this one being my favorite because it's somewhat underexposed. As you can see, the shadows get a bit muddy, but you know what? I think it actually works quite well. It makes the water really pop out. Way back I switched over to some ectochrome and got a moose shot, kind of. Glacier National Park is really a sight to behold. At Apgar Village we decompressed from our very short hike and ate some huckleberry sandwiches. And I shot some of my favorite photos from the trip here. Back at camp, the clouds had rolled in and it started hailing. So we covered the wood and did what we do best in a moment of utter chaos. We cracked open a beer. The next morning would be our last at a campsite that we had called home for the past two nights. So we packed up all of our crap and headed across the road to a different campsite. To make the transition easier and the pain go away, the campground host brought us peanut butter cookies. She was the best. We hung out at the campsite for the better half of the day until it started raining and so we packed up everything and headed into the park. Of course, you know me, if we're riding, I'm packing. set up our little operation on the shores of Lake McDonald with nothing but beer, camp chairs, and a dream.
finished up my roll of Portra 400 and threw in some Ilford HP 5. Here's a rare shot of me taken on film by my buddy Tim. Why is it rare, you may ask? Well, if you look closely, you can see I'm drinking water. Here's another photo of me, but here. Now, this whole episode, you might be like, why do all of his Polaroids look like a baboon's butthole? I think there are several issues with my SX-70, stemming mostly from the fact that I don't think it's been kept up or repaired since its original purchase way back in the day. The next day, the fun was over and it was time to head home. But as the purple guy in Avengers once said, a thing is not beautiful because it lasts. We headed back down through Idaho and stopped in Salmon, where uh, there wasn't a whole lot to do. Meanwhile, in Salmon, Idaho. just driving back down to Salt Lake City because we missed Timmy the cat. Unfortunately, Timmy's owners are dicks and they iced us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We deserve this. <laughs> It was then time to head west to the salt flats. I had some XP2 in the Mamiya, which later got swapped for some Portra 400. This was kind of an interesting scenario to shoot because I'd never really run into a problem like this. Because it was so bright out and the light was bouncing off the salt and blinding everyone, the Mamiya 7 couldn't go fast enough to expose properly at 400 ISO. These were all shot at f22 and 1 500th of a second and the light meter was still telling me to push it darker. So I don't know what to tell you all, my hands were tied and I had to overexpose. I also shot some 8mm footage here uh, and for whatever reason it just did not turn out. 
After we were done Tokyo drifting in the Prius out on the salt flats, we headed to our final national park, Great Basin. It seems that our luck still had not run out because we were able to snag a campsite next to a river, which we prefer because the frigid mountain water keeps our beers cold. Unfortunately, at this campsite, there were fire restrictions, so we had to improvise and drink our own piss like Bear Grylls. How that makes sense, I'm still not sure. The next day, we slowly made our way to Las Vegas, where nothing of importance happened to us. I shot some Porter 400 at sunset while we were outside, let's say, eating huckleberries. And finally, we made our desert voyage back home to Los Angeles. In the end, it was an awesome trip, and you know it's an awesome trip when you wake up every day with a smile on your face and the motto, today is a good day to die, in your head. In all seriousness, I do enjoy being on the road, and this trip was one of my favorites. The people that you travel with are what make the experience worthwhile. Unfortunately, the people I was with are dicks, so that's not the case here, but in general, that's true. Some of the photos I took on this trip are some of my favorites ever, but I gotta say, I think I enjoyed the 8mm footage the most. It just looks so magical and nostalgic for some reason. Now part of me really wants to shoot a whole music video on 8mm, but I doubt I'll ever be able to get a hold of Aaron Carter or the A-teens. I think this is my favorite shot from the trip. It captures the mood I look for in my work perfectly, and every time I look at it, I wish I could just throw myself into the shot. But that may just be me projecting my own emotions onto it, because that was one of my favorite days. Anyway, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the ride, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. You know, once I'm out of Huckleberry Rehab. Doritos! Oh, thanks, dog. Are you taping me grabbing this Dorito?